Hello there, my name is Bernie, and if you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so recently we've been um, unpacking my thoughts on the Nikon Z8 um, and some lenses, mainly the 24-70 and the 100-400, and they've been fantastic. Um, but due to some pretty uh, average weather, um, I've decided to talk about something a little bit different today, and we'll go back to the Nikon Z8 shortly. It's uh, my favourite 35mm camera of all time. And it's an icon, so staying on theme. Um, but uh, to give you some backstory, last year I traveled to Japan to visit my sister, and I had three days in Tokyo uh, before I traveled to uh, Hakuba uh, to go skiing and, and enjoy a family holiday. So I bought a X100V with me, uh, which I've ended up selling. Um, it just wasn't right for me at the time. And the GFX100S, which was an incredible camera, and um, especially for Japan, uh, some of the street scenes, incredible landscape, and I'll um, show you some of those photos now. So back to the camera hunt. Um, I decided when I went to Japan, rather than just aimlessly walk around stores trying to find a, an interesting camera, um, I'd head to uh, Sh uh, Shinjuku uh, province um, and check out some of the stores like Map Camera, uh, Kitamura Camera, which is my absolute favorite. Um, and, and Map and the other stores were great, um, but um, Kitamura was just, incredible and um, when I was talking about my trip with one of the camera store owners here in New Zealand they recommended instead of just wandering aimlessly and trying to find you a, a new film camera to buy as a bit of a token memento of your trip to pick a camera before you go because there are thousands and thousands of options uh, all of them amazing in Japan uh, but have a target have something that you're looking for um, rather than just um, you know walking around trying to find something in a huge pile of um, film cameras. So I decided um, to go down the track of the Nikon FM2. So this has been my favorite uh, film camera uh, since I uh, received it about 14 years ago. And I didn't actually buy this. Uh, I was actually given it by um, somebody, uh, an ex reporter at The Advertiser, which is a newspaper in Australia. Uh, so super lucky. Um, they just weren't using it anymore. And um, so long story short, I decided to go after a variation of this. And this is the original FM2. So as you can see, super, you know, robust, you know, kind of brassing, um, something that I can just throw around, chuck in a bag, head down to the beach. I just don't need to worry about it if it knocks against things because it's already been kind of beaten uh, to death anyway. Um, so I absolutely adore this camera. So instead of going after another one of these in better condition, I decided, to go after a, a model that came a little later. So the Nikon FM2 came out in 1982, um, so well before my time. Um, and this one here is the Nikon FM2T. So a variation of the Nikon FM2, uh, the T standing for titanium. And as you can see by the color there in the body, um, the Nikon FM2 is made of a titanium outer casing, which makes it lighter and a lot more durable. And I think it just looks incredible as well. So this was the camera that I went after, and the team at Map Camera were amazing, and I ended up buying the FMT from them uh, before making my way to Kitamura, uh, which is only a short walk from Map Camera anyway. Uh, so a great area to go camera sh uh, shopping, and I bought the 35mm F2 from them. And again, great, helpful team, um, and incredible customer service, as you would expect uh, in Japan. So what is the FM2 and the FM2T? Um, so it's a 35mm camera, so they're virtually the same camera. So in terms of the use, uh, the features, um, and things like that, the, the, the major difference here is the Nikon FM2T has that titanium body, making it a lot lighter and obviously stronger as well. So it's a fully manual camera, lacking a lot of the semi-auto or auto exposure modes, uh, which is like, you know, part of the reason that you would want to pick up this camera. It uses manual focus F-mount lenses, um, and it features a through the lens light meter, and it's coupled with both the shutter speed and the aperture settings to calculate the exposure. So the camera is stripped back for just essential and minimal control, as you can see there on the top dial. Um, so it just gives you everything you need, but nothing more. And that's the benefit of a camera like this. It's tactical, it feels great in the hand, and it just works. So essentially you're getting everything you need, but kind of no additional frills. But that's part of the 
the essence and the reason I, I love this camera and I keep coming back to it because it gives you that experience. It gives you that thing that you want with a, with a film camera rather than having all those bells and whistles and just overcomplicating what doesn't need to be um, a, complicate, a complicated situation. You know, it's a, it's a light type box with a roll of film and a light meter. Otherwise, everything else is manually controlled. So you've got that experience that you're looking for when you pick up a film camera, which is excellent. And because uh, the light meter um, is powered by a battery, uh, once the battery um, either stops working, runs out of juice, it doesn't stop the control of the camera, which is the beauty of a camera like this. So if you're out traveling, if you're on a multi-day hike somewhere, or if you're doing a long photographic project and the battery stops, all it's going to do is stop the light meter from working, but it won't stop you from continually to use the, the, the camera. It doesn't control the shutter or anything else. So that's the beauty of a camera like this, is you know if the ca if the light meter decides to die one day which you know i would assume that it will uh, in the future i can continue to use the camera i can just grab a, a handheld light meter and just meter by hand so it's never going to stop the camera from working um it's just going to stop that light meter um from giving you a um, a reading inside the camera So let's talk about the uh, controls and some of the, um, the features of the camera. And like I said, they're pretty stripped back. But on the top of the camera here, uh, you've got a, a shutter speed um, dial with a ISO sensitivity uh, built in there, uh, which tells the camera what um, ISO um, film you're using. It's got a shutter release button there on the top, film advance lever on the top, a film rewind um, knob on the side here, and it also has, funnily enough, a multiple exposure switch, uh, which for a strip back camera does seem a little bit weird, but hey, a great feature to have. And on the, on the front of the camera here, it's got a depth of field preview lever, a uh, self timer lever, a lens um, release button, um, and then on the bottom of the tripod holds the tripod socket, a film rewind button, and a battery compartment, which as discussed before, just powers the light meter. It's also got the connections here if you do uh, happen to find and use a motor drive with it. So as you can see, a super simple camera, which again is the beauty and um, the brilliance of this. You know, it's got fantastic usability, it's got everything you need, um, but nothing else. So why did I end up buying this? So I first received the FM2, the original um, black one here, uh, 14 years ago uh, from a journalist at the Advertiser, a newspaper in Australia. Um, and as you can see, it's beaten up, it's brassed, uh, it's dented, um, used and abused, and I just absolutely love it for that. You know, you can just throw this thing around. It's a lot heavier than the um, Nikon FMT2, which to be honest, I actually quite enjoy having that weight in the hand. Um, but it just, it looks great. And um, it's just a camera that I've just continually, uh, continued to come back to. And uh, other photographers have mentioned like the FM3A, uh, which has, you know, auto um, uh, controls and things like that. But I just find that additional electronic element distracts from what is essentially a fantastic camera to use. And I've always used this like when I just, uh, when I don't need to worry about it, you know, like I said before, when I take it to the beach, when I take it out camping, tramping, um, hiking, anything where I know it might get knocked about. Um, and I just don't need to worry about this because the beauty of this camera is when it starts to wear and it starts to get brassed, it looks better and better. So when it came to getting a memento from my trip in Japan, I thought that, you know, instead of going for something like a, I don't know, a Leica and other options that I was looking at, um, to get the FM2T was just perfect. 
because it gives me a second body, you know, when the other one's light meter ends up going or it stops working because it hasn't been serviced for a very long time. Um, I've got this one and it's because it's been serviced in Japan, it is just, it runs like clockwork. It is incredible. And with its titanium body, it's stronger, it's lighter. It also styles completely different to the other Nikon that I have. And one of the other advantages of getting a Nikon um, system, um, film camera system from that era is it has a huge library of lenses. So you're spoiled with choice. You have everything you're ever gonna need. I generally stick with a 28, a 35, um, but the most versatile lens I've found is the 55 mil 3.5 macro. You know, you can do longer um, uh, landscape images with it. You can do portraits, you can do macro um, images. Uh, it does a, it's extremely good job of that. Um, it's a sharp lens and they're super cheap. So if you're looking for something that kind of does it all, and a good place to start, I can't recommend this lens enough. And as I said before, I really prefer this camera, be it the titanium version or the original, over the uh, FE and FM3As, uh, mainly due to the lack of electronic control and simplicity. And even the look, uh, like I just prefer the look of this camera. It's a personal preference, I know, because the other cameras are very popular because of their auto um, uh, features. Uh, and if you're into that and you need that, then that's fantastic, I don't. And, um, but the lack of bezel, bells and whistles always kind of draw me back to this. If I needed those exposure controls and whatnot, I'd probably grab a Fujifilm X-T5 and just shoot digital. Um, but that's why I like cameras like the Hasselblad 500CM um, and my 4x5 cameras as well, because they lack that um, auto ability, uh, which makes it more tactical and more of an experience for myself. I still think that the price as well for the FM two especially, but the even the FM2T, uh, given it's a limited edition, is still obtainable for most. Um, you know, they are starting to really push up there, and I was lucky to get one um, early on in the piece before the mad rush back to film. But given what you get, um, I'd highly recommend this camera to almost anybody. Because uh, like I said, given the lens collection behind the Nikon F system, you've got so many options, and you can pretty much find something for any um, type of photography that you're doing. Um, and I also can't recommend shopping in Japan enough. Um, it's an amazing place, and hopefully I'll get back there soon, especially if you're looking for things like film cameras, electronics, things like that. It was an absolute joy um, to, be, um, to be able to go and experience that as well. So tell me in the comments, have you ever owned a Nikon FM2 uh, film camera? If not, what's your favorite cam film camera currently? Um, or are you looking to get into film? Um, and what other options are you currently looking at? And as always, if you have any questions about this or any other film cameras, uh, let me know. I'm always happy to help um, or give you my opinion for what it's worth in the comments. And as always, thank you for your time today. Your support is everything. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Um, it's the best thing to do uh, to support the channel. So thank you and I'll see you next time.